Cars and music have had a long-standing relationship, and a recent article has listed the top 30 songs that mention cars. The list includes cars ranging from the Chevelle to the Thunderbird and are all identifiable as specific models. The article only includes cars sold in the 20th century. Check out the full list to see if your favorite car made it. In a 1963 hit by the Rip Chords, the singer mentions towing his AC Cobra to a race meet with a Cadillac. The song talks about the Cobra shutting down its opposition, Jaguar XKES and Chevrolet Corvette Stingrays. The singer's lead was so great that he was able to coast to the finish line in neutral and still win. The Baby Austin was so successful that it was only a matter of time before a British songwriter used it as a subject. The songwriter in question was Clarkson Rose, who wrote and recorded the pretty witty ditty My Little Austin 7 in 1928. The accompaniment was provided on that occasion by a band. Four years later, Norman Long recorded a more up-tempo version, backed only by a piano. The track on the B-side of Long's record is Monday Morning, which also contains a reference to an Austin 7. Chuck Berry's iconic 1955 song, Maybelline, features a Cadillac Coupe de Ville chasing after the object of the singer's affection. Based on lyrics indicating the car reaches a top speed of 104 miles per hour, experts believe it must have been a 1953 Coupe de Ville version of the fourth generation series 62. The song was covered multiple times by other artists, bringing success to Barry beyond his own performance. The lyrics of two popular songs, from different genres, share a line about a 99 Seville. This refers to the second model year of the fifth-generation Cadillac Seville, produced from 1998 to 2004. Another song, released later, references different cars but not a Cadillac Seville. The second-generation Chevrolet Corvette, produced from 1963 to 1967, was known as the Stingray and was a popular car choice for songwriters. It was mentioned in well-known songs such as Dead Man's Curve and Shut Down. In 2001, David Ball recorded Riding with Private Malone which featured a 66 Corvette. A classic 1960s song features a little old lady who isn't what she seems. The little old lady from Pasadena may have a pretty garden, but she also owns a brand new, fast, shiny red Dodge 330 with a 7-liter V8 engine, a car mainly used for drag racing. Although it's uncertain if the lady competes herself, her speedy driving has earned her the nickname, the Terror of Colorado Boulevard. A tribe called Quest's hit song, I Left My Wallet in El Segundo, references a 1974 Dodge Dart that made a 6,000-mile road trip from New York to California. The song's official video features a similar car and the Dart was discontinued after the 1976 model year, but was revived in 2013. Luke Bryan's album opener My Old Bronco is a sentimental ode to his first-generation Ford Bronco. Bryan sings about the vehicle's lack of doors or windows, suggesting it's actually a problematic Bronco Roadster. However, the album was released in 2015, and the Roadster was only produced from 1966 to 1968, causing confusion. Possible explanations include a conversion or artistic license, but overall, Fans can simply enjoy the nostalgic track without worrying too much about the details. The Beach Boys song, Little Deuce Coupe, references a 1932 Ford Coupe with a V8 engine known as the Model 18. The car also inspired the song's lyrics about a flathead mill. The updated 1933 and 1934 versions of the car were called Model 40, but still referred to as the 1932 Ford. Additionally, Deuce Coupe is the name of a ballet featuring Beach Boys music. Ford Model A and Hot Rod culture are now synonymous with American music. From Archie Shibley's 1950 Hot Road Race to Charlie Ryan's 1955 Hot Rod Lincoln, the Model A is a celebrated car of early Hot Rod culture. These songs depict the car in races against other Hot Rods with modified engines. Since then, Hot Rod Lincoln has been covered by many artists, including Johnny Bond, who made it into a hit. The Ford Model T has inspired modified versions known as T-Buckets or Bucket TS, featuring extensive customization and V8 engines. Jan and Dean released Bucket T in 1964, based on an earlier song by Jan and Arnie, with covers by Ronnie and the Daytonas and The Who. 
Though similar, each band added their own touch to instrumental solos. The Ford Mustang, first released in the 1960s, became an iconic symbol of American muscle cars. Mustang Sally, a hit song written by Sir Mac Rice in 1965, associated the name of the car with a fictional woman. Along with Wilson Pickett's famous 1966 rendition, John Lee Hooker even wrote another song, Mustang Sally in GTO, where Sally switched to driving a Pontiac. The car had a lasting impact on American culture and continues to be a sought-after vehicle today. Bob Seger's song, Makin' Thunderbirds was recorded in his 1982 album, The Distance, about the first Ford Thunderbird model year in 1955. The song lyrics claim he made T-Birds but are unrelated to his Ford connections. The Beach Boys' famous song, Fun Fun Fun, was based on a true story about a father who withdrew his permission for his daughter to drive his Ford Thunderbird after she took it to a burger joint instead of the library. The song doesn't specify the year of the car, but it's been discovered that the Thunderbird in question was a 1963 model, the last year of the third generation. Mystery solved. Holden FJ, a Sydney-based band known for their slapdash approach to thrash metal mayhem, released their final album, The Great Aussie Demo, in 1996 with a track titled, FJ Holden, a reference to the classic car that had gone out of production 40 years earlier. Holden, the company that made the car and was discontinued by GM in 2020, started out as a saddlery before moving into car bodybuilding and eventually manufacturing complete vehicles in 1948. Rapper Nas referenced the Infinity Q45, which he renamed Q45 Infinite, in his hit song, If I Ruled the World, Imagine That. The car was one of several mentioned in the song, which was released in 1996 before production of the second generation Q45 began. The reference was made to fit the rhyming scheme of the song's lyrics. In the 1964 song, Dead Man's Curve, by Jan and Dean, a Jaguar XKE, or E-Type, races against a Corvette but crashes at a notorious bend in Los Angeles. The incident is described as, a horrible sight. The car was likely a Series 1 with an XK straight 6 engine, but it is unclear if it was a coupe or convertible. California setting suggests the latter. Singer Amanda Palmer's song, The Jeep Song, talks about a bad ex-boyfriend and every time she sees a black Jeep Cherokee like the one he owned, she's reminded of him. The song was released in 2003, but Palmer refers to the 1996 model specifically. Rock legend Mark Bolan referred to himself as a Jeepster in one of T. Rex's celebrated songs, with his girlfriend being described as a Jaguar. The song, released in 1971, features a motoring theme that disappears towards the end when Bolan refers to himself as a vampire. While the particular Jaguar model remains unidentified, it suggested that Bolan was referring to the Jeepster Commando, launched in 1966, which was renamed Jeep Commando about the time the song hit the airwaves. Flanders and Swan's 1963 show, At the Drop of Another Hat, included the song Sounding Brass, where they competed by boasting their achievements and possessions. Swan claims he bought a mini super, to which Flanders replies that he has one in his boot, British 4 trunk. The mini super refers to the Austin 7 Super and Morris Mini Minor Super, launched in 1961, and resembling the high-performance Cooper models. It was discontinued by the end of 1962, with the Mini Super Deluxe being a different product. In an emotional beat poem, Tim Minchin describes an encounter with a wealthy stockbroker who believes artists are richer than he is in a philosophical sense. Fueled by anger, Minchin finally explodes when the stockbroker compares his piano playing to Elton John's. In the end, Minchin bitterly refers to himself as a wealthy, wealthy man in a 1981 Mitsubishi Colt. A recent investigation by motoring researchers has caused despair and anguish as they attempt to identify the car referenced in Madness 1982 hit, I Like Driving in My Car. The lyrics describe a Morris built in 1959 and previously owned by the GPO, but further clues suggest it may actually be a van and not a car at all. The reference to a factory by the time is also confusing, as the Morris Minor was not built within 100 miles of either of the UK's two rivers with that name. In 1958, 
the Playmates recorded a song called Beep Beep, which describes a race between a Cadillac and a Nash Rambler. As the tempo increases, the cars go up to 120 miles per hour, but the Rambler is stuck in second gear. It's unclear if the Rambler in the song is the earlier, smaller model or the larger one still in production. The song may have led to a rise in Rambler sales but that's uncertain. The Oldsmobile 88 was built for 50 years across 10 generations. Known as the Rocket 88 due to its powerful 5-liter flathead V8 engine, it inspired the song, Rocket 88, by Jackie Brenston and his Delta Cats. The song is often called the first rock and roll song, but that claim is disputed. The rare song, Pontiac Firebird Trans AM. 455 SD, by Denise Tech of Australian band Radio Birdman, is named after a high-performance engine. Specifically, Pontiac 7.5-liter V8, also known as SD, 455 or Super Duty 455. Tech's lyrics mention it's in a 1971 Firebird, but it wasn't fitted to anything until 1973. The song appears on Radio Birdman's Living Eyes album and was covered by Swedish band The Helicopters. The song, GTO, by Ronnie and the Daytonas, released in 1964, is believed to be about the Pontiac GTO due to the lyrics mentioning specific engine specifications and a reference to a drag strip, which wouldn't apply to a Ferrari. The car is also referred to as a Pon Pon, a name that would not be used for a Ferrari. In the 80s, Model 500 released Night Drive, through Babylon, featuring a black Porsche 924 at the start. The outdated car was launched nine years prior and only produced for three more. Model 500 is known as the original pioneer of Detroit techno, with this track being an example of their futuristic sound. Atkins, who used the alias, has also gone by infinity, without mentioning a car in a song. Roxy Music's Brian Ferry sung about his Studebaker in their 1972 hit, Virginia Plain. The car in question wasn't identified until now. It was a Studebaker Speedster produced in 1955, a rare and collectible model. However, the photos of Ferry's car suggest that it was not entirely original, and was missing fog lights. The Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, a sports car based on the VW Beetle, was discontinued in 1975, but has inspired musicians into the 21st century. The Humbug's Twist The Truth features Cream Green Carmen Ghia, Anchor and Bears No More Nights on the Roof has a song titled Carmen Ghia, and Capiax who is Donnie Flamingo? Includes an instrumental track with the same name. It's unclear if they refer to the original car or the Type 34 version, but it's likely the former. A new article has mentioned a unique song called Hippopotamus by Sparks that features a surprising object in its lyrics, a 1958 Volkswagen Microbus. The Microbus was a multi-passenger version of the VW Type 2 and was visually similar to the Beetle. This adds an interesting twist to the song, which also includes other objects that rhyme with Hippopotamus.